Blog Talk Radio. Uh... There is no image you can hold, no thought you can think that encompasses the great self. Your essence is immortal and unchanging, yet it is the foundation for all that moves. Rest in the shimmering emptiness that is the source of this world, and remember who you are. Hello everyone, this is Chris and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. That was a reading from the Radiant Sutras. And uh, for those of you who are my private students, uh, the last line it says, and remember who you are. This is something that, that, uh, that we have been discussing for some time. And so I just want you to remember, those of you who I work with individually, who you are, who you are. And uh, I would like to welcome my co-host for this program and actually the, uh, the, the benefactor, the provider, and, and uh, you know, the European hub for Kundalini Awakening uh, Systems in Europe. Uh, this would be the Celtic Queen of questionable comforts. <laughs> Santara. Welcome, Santara. <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> it's good to be here, as always, on a Wednesday. And it's good to see everybody in the chat room. Hello, Elizabeth. And Sukha, good to see you and everybody. And it's good to be here, Chrism. Yes, um, yes, yes. Hello, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez typing. It's a new addendum to her <laughs> last name. And then guest 1099, sounds like an IRS tax form. Tax form. And KAS 11004, which I think would be you. And then hello, Suka. Suka, I'd love to, to, to have a, a chat with you sometimes. You, you come to a few shows, would like to know your input and, and how you – how this show may be helping or, or, or affecting you in any way. Um, wow, look at this. Yes, hello, Rosemary. Mm-hmm. Hello, Eileen. So everybody's here. All right. Um, oh, do we have any announcements that we should we should say right off the bat? Oh, okay. Well, I'm just after spotting there that Elizabeth has made an announcement in relation to the seminar but I'll wait for a while to talk about that until you've spoken with Rosemary or Eileen. But if I could just begin... No, 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 no. Let's let's jump on that right now. That that looks pretty good. That's an excellent flight. Jeez Louise. I want one of those flights, Rosemary. (laughs) (laughs) It's Elizabeth is actually typing that that to you there, Chris. She's saying hello to you all. Thank you, thank you. That's really nice because, wow, look at that price. I mean... I remember I flew back to visit Eileen at one time for 200 and but that was like 8 years ago or some somewhere like that. Wow, 228, that's a great price. So anybody that would like to come out to the Minnesota seminar at the end of September, last weekend in September, uh please give Rosemary Goliath a call or or uh, at uh <laughs> uh we're just going to bring her right on here now. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. Make your announcement. <laughs> yes. The phone number, please call me, 651-452-3161. And if you prefer email, it would be rosemaryg at usinternet.com. And we are having conversations with people like Elizabeth more often and closer to so that is uh, always I missed that last part I'm going to assume that 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 is always an extreme joy and and blissful event Mm -hmm. yes of 
version of that is what I said, but I like yours better. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, hey, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, did you see the price, 228 that that Elizabeth yeah. uh, posted up here? I didn't see that, but she mentioned in an email about it. Great so. price. Let's look into that for people. And, yes, I'm that was, That's from the Northwest on Delta Airlines, and she said that's a round trip. So that sounds wonderful. It's a great yes. price. Gosh. Okay, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez and Rosemary uh, G at user at US Usernet. What is it? US Internet. <laughs> USInternet.com. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. So uh, I, sent- I, Go ahead. I just give the, uh, the website quiz them. Uh, where okay. people can go if they would like to make a donation to support the work that you do to support people that um, come to Kundalini Awakenings and to you for support during their Kundalini Awakening um, process. Go to is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and on the right-hand side you will see the Donate button. That is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And if you don't have a pen with you, you can just Google Ascension Kulogspot and you'll get the address on a Google search. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia Santara. Okay, everybody, we're going to get this show on the road. Uh, There is no image you can hold, no thought you can think that encompasses the great self. And this is so true. I'm reading from the first paragraph of the Radiant Sutras. Uh, This this one happens to be on page 251. Uh, There is no image you can hold, no thought you can think that encompasses the great self. It's just not possible within the five sense paradigm. So, for instance... You know, I've had my Kundalini awakened for a few years now. And when when I place my attention at above the shall we say the, the third eye or the sixth chakra, everything becomes taken into what all the only way I can describe it is a level of infinity. So the top of the head and the forehead and you know, around behind the back of the head, that all just kind of disappears. If you follow the the symmetrical uh, uh, circular uh, explosion, you know, of a flower or something of that nature, you can kind of see that uh, reflected in in if you were able to to picture it, you would be able to you'd be you'd see a, a a sphere that just keeps getting broader and broader, wider and wider, more and more, uh, uh, encompassing more and more. And and this is what the this is how the Kundalini comes to me when I when I place my attention at a certain area within a certain context and concept of the Kundalini. This is one of the areas that I tend to visit regularly. I tend to place my attention there and just kind of feel what the multiverse, the omniverse is, is, uh, is saying. <coughs> and it's so true, but, in, in, you know, when the, when the Radiant Sutra says, there is no image you can hold, no thought you can think that encompasses the great self. That is true if you're looking at it from an outside-in vantage point. When you look at it from an inside-out vantage point, Uh, it might be better to write it this way. There is no image you cannot hold, no thought you cannot think that doesn't encompass the great self. So when you look at it from a, a kundalini perspective, because grace has its hand upon your shoulder and is changing you, uh, from your atomics, from from pre-atomic structures, uh, all the way up through the the actual 
uh, mature organism, it's changing the individual completely, completely changing it. And this individual is, by virtue of it being a creation in this multiverse, is already really a, a, an aspect or a, a spark, shall we say, of the great self. Uh, that, that's already happened by being alive, right? By, by having that grace, that divinity. And yet, when the Kundalini comes, that's, that's a whole different level of communication between the great self and the individual. And uh, one of the big uh, symptoms that happens during a spinal sweep is the oneness event, that oneness with all creation, that oneness with God that oneness with that which is within and that which is without, that is that which is above and that which is below, uh, that, that nexus of lines, that nexus of experience, uh, that changes you as well. When you reach that point of God consciousness, don't mistake it for being all of a sudden, you're Cecil B. DeMille, right? And God said, you know, and so forth. You're not Cecil B. DeMille. Um, and, and this, of course, you really, <laughs> you're, you're going to walk that Hollywood path, and of course you can be Cecil B. if you want. Uh, you know, quick, quick, get the, uh, get the Internet uh, address. <laughs> you're not God in that sense. You are with God and of God, and you are a component of that infinite ocean that we call divinity or God. Um, but but you are not the comic book uh, Hollywood, uh, you know, action hero version of God, unless of course. Uh, you know, you're teaching people about kundalini and things of that nature. I think I, think I can allow for that caveat. <laughs> for instance, I tell you what, I mean, the kundalini downloads things into your head. A lot of people know this. And so you, you know, you have the kundalini, you're in relationship with the divine, and you're thinking, well, how, what can I do? How can I assist? What, what can I do to help other people have such... An amazing level of greatness occur to them in their lives. How can I teach them about this? Where can I take up where our government has failed us and where our religious institutions and our teaching institutions, our educational institutions have failed us? And I thought, well, gosh, you know, a movie seems to be the way to reach a lot of people. Immediately, two movies were downloaded into my head. The scripts. Where they take place, the characterizations, the characters themselves, uh, a lot of the plot, the twists, the good guys, the bad guys, the good girls, the bad girls, uh, the good corporate structure, the bad corporate structure. I mean, it goes, I mean, the Kundalini, as soon as you begin to open to it, you know, as like I said, I, I, I place my attention uh, on the crown daily, all the time, actually, and 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 I feel what the universe has to say to me. And whenever I come up with a question, or I'm I'm looking at an individual person, say I'm doing a Skype session, I'm looking at an individual person. Well, Kundalini brings into sharp focus certain issues that that person needs to hear, but also certain issues that would be a greater complement of information that is that is it self giving itself to us through uh, the medium that we're most comfortable receiving. And in this case, and in this day, in this age, uh, it would be, I think, a digital format, uh, a Hollywood format, uh, a format that has all the marketing and all of the, you know, the different areas of that. And so I have the two, the two movies. Uh, uh, you know, if people are interested in the premise and, then I'll go into the premise for both of them just to to see. Oh, look, here we are. Look at this. Hi, Bart. Good to see you. Um, yeah. 
Right on. Nice to nice to be to join us. Uh, mailbox ninety nine. Right on. <laughs> okay, okay. So with the Kundalini, I'm going to suggest that you read it both ways. That first paragraph. There is no image you can hold. There is no image you cannot hold. There is no thought you can think, no thought you cannot think that does or does not encompass the great self. And then as we continue this sutra, your essence is immortal and unchanging, yet it is the foundation for all that moves. All that moves is another way of saying change. So basically, uh, your essence is immortal and unchanging. Uh, so your essence is immortal and still, and then yet it is the foundation for all that moves, that changes. So stillness is what causes change, and, and I'll also suggest change is what causes stillness. Rest in the shimmering emptiness. Once again, they're, they're exploring kundalini information here by, by uh, writing uh, opposites, shimmering emptiness. Emptiness should, should be actually a lack of light as well, a lack of movement, a lack of anything to see. Okay. But they're suggesting you rest in the shimmering emptiness because it's that kundalini radiance it's that kundalini energetic expression that is coming out of you even in the spiritual form even in the the form of the physical the full-on physical daily eight to five whatever person the kundalini is still expressing fully through it's just focusing in different areas allowing that person to have that job or drive that car or get those kids ready for school or do whatever you know the, the kundalini is extremely versatile it knows you better than you know you. And so it knows when to come and when to go. When the kids need to get, to get dressed, when, you know, you know, just leave that to the five cents person. They know how to do that. <laughs> Rest in the shimmering emptiness. That is the source of this world. Shimmering emptiness. That is the source of this world. And remember who you are. Who you are. And once again, as I mentioned before, for the private students, uh, who you are is very different, a very different question uh, for you than it is to our regular audience member here. Okay, just so you, you know, I want you to make that distinction. Remember who you are. Remember who you are, everyone. You are that spark of divinity. You are that grace incarnate. Grace incarnate. Okay, Latin for in the flesh. You are the grace in the flesh. You are, you are the living word. A kundalini awakened person or a person striving or, or, or working towards the achievement of kundalini awakening is, a, is definitely a chosen person, somebody who has somehow entered the stream of information that allows for an enlightenment equation to, to, uh, to begin outside of, of, say, normal refinement channels, you know, the, the ego, you know, the basic ego things, grudges. Anger, hatred, murder, mayhem, criminal, you know, crime, all that stuff. Um, when you begin to walk the Kundalini path, as I've said many times, the, that path also begins to walk you. And you begin to, to be compelled to work and express your life within the understandings of trust, love, forgiveness, patience, honesty, truth. But not everybody can handle the same amounts of, 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 of that recipe as others. You know, and this is, of course, where forgiveness comes in, in, into a great uh, service for people. Uh, we'll say, you know, on a, on, a, on a 
on a scale from one to ten, one being the the easiest and ten being the worst. You know, a person might respond to pain levels at uh, at say number six far differently than than the person next to them. We have different karmas. We have different physiologies. We have different psychologies. We were raised in different families. We are programmed in similar but different ways. And so our response to pain is also going to be similar but different. And so the kundalini recognizes this within the individual. Kundalini individuates people. Just as when you're in the God consciousness and you look out upon the environment and you can see every twig, you can feel every pebble, every speck, everything, every speck of dust, every drop in the sea, everything you feel at the same time at once. But it's it's not, it's a timeless moment because it's not wrapped up within time. But within the time stream, uh, that length of time that the person is within that expression is different for each person. Some things are to be experienced in very, very brief momentary flashes. Uh, Any kind of an extended visit would, you know, damage the person. And for those of you who have gone beyond the mere exploration of kundalini as a, wow, what's this all about? And, you know, as a kind of a a curiosity source. For those of you that have gone further into it that have begun to experience some of the symptoms that have, say, begun to practice the safeties, begun to do some forgivenesses in their lives, conscious, purposeful forgiveness, uh, maybe even doing a recapitulation, uh, people, you have to understand that the safety protocols, which, I'm, which is what I'm taking from right now, uh, the safety protocols uh, are a standalone activation equation for Kundalini. You do the safeties every day, twice a day, say within 30 to 60 days, you're going to have a Kundalini activation. But you have to really do it. You can't just pretend to do it. You can't go, okay, I'm going to do the safeties but I I don't like that fourth Tibetan. It's just too hard to do, so I'm going to skip that. But I'll do all the rest of them. Okay, you don't get to do it that way. You do them all or you don't do them. Now, you can do them sequentially in a sense, so just to build up strength. So, for instance, when you just start out to do, say, the five Tibetans, I only want you to do five or six turns to the right, not 21. I only want you to do you know, three to four of, of, of right number four when you get to that. You know, so you do five or six of the spinning and then and then you lay down and you do five or six of the uh, second Tibetan, third Tibetan, fourth Tibetan, fifth Tibetan. You don't, I don't want you trying to do all 21 or trying to be, you know, super yoga dude or do that and say, oh, I can do that. You know, and there you go hurting yourself. Don't do that. Don't let your ego determine how enthusiastic your uh, your practice of the uh, safeties is going to be. Let let your higher functioning self begin to make those determinations. Um, right. So so the practice of the safeties is a standalone activation sequence. You know, thirty to sixty days. If you're able to do a very very strong and sincere form of of practice with the safeties, you know, really doing the the forgivenesses, really the tolerances, the honesty, the truth, the nobility of those types of behaviors will begin to really have an effect upon your energetic anatomy. Thoughts and emotions and actions are energy in motion. They, They have an energetic source, but they also have an energetic expression across the different frequencies of energetic expression that we combine with every day. You know, a wheat, a wheat plant has its own energetic frequency that it broadcasts into the multiverse. So does a blade of grass, so does a tomato, uh, a peach, a pine tree, uh, an animal. Uh, you know, I mean, these frequencies that we intermingle with daily, you know, they have the ability to change the course 
of our lives, the destiny of our lives. And then when you have the, when you mix in a divine uh, ingredient such as the Kundalini, well, that that changes things in a very big way. Okay, and so remember the amplification aspect of the Kundalini and how it may begin to amplify how you begin to live your life in this world. As I said before, this is not in a linear time stream equation. You don't get to, you know, it's not going to be that easy for you because it deals with with dual non-duality. It, it's the it's the the music between the notes. The you know the ideas between the words between the phrases. It's the opposites joining. You know the opposites joining. So you know in this way you know it really is important that uh, that we begin to understand how how this may affect us. Now one of the one of the ways that uh, I was asked not at, well. Sort of, it was suggested to me by my Kundalini uh, earlier today to talk about some of the fast ways that people like to come into this. I have covered this information before, but uh, evidently it bears repeating. Uh, if you're not into drugs, if you're not into uh, you know changing your religion, becoming a Hindu, becoming a Buddhist, becoming this or that, if you're if you're if you kind of like who you are and how you are at this moment you know then then a lot of you are just going to go ahead and and uh explore your own kundalini your own way and and, and I think that's great that's it's typically a, a longer harder path because you know you're uh, but not so much these days there's a lot of information on the kundalini out there if you're really focused on looking at it and looking for it and the kundalini can really develop that level of focus in a person so uh, a lot of people are going to try to explore kundalini through sex because they've heard of tantra and in the west not and i'm not going to say for all people in the west but certainly for uh, a good general amount of people in the west uh, tantra equals sex it equals the the uh the male anatomy blending with the female anatomy. Okay, uh, that is also used for procreative purposes. And you know, the, people are going to do this because you know it's. As far as I know, and I'm not sure about this, so you may want to check with your local authorities. Um, I believe tantra is legal in the United States. Now that may be changing you know, the Supreme Court and all. But uh, Tantra at this point, I think, may be legal in the United States. And so a lot of people are going to practice it as a as a pathway towards enlightenment. And, it, you know, Mantak Chia, he talks about it a lot, you know, and the Taoists, you know, they really, the Taoists, uh, the, 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 uh, the Taoists of ancient China and, and, and actually uh, uh, today's China, uh, they like to practice the, the many different ways they've come up with to try to control the kundalini. They really like the control thing. Okay, and I'm not going to deprive them of that. And kundalini has come through them as it has come through, you know, almost all of the cultures of this world and given very specific information for the Taoists to practice. As a matter of fact, we use... Uh, some of the Taoist techniques and the safeties protocols. And so I'm certainly not coming down on the Taoists. But the, where, where, say, the, the, the Taoist ideology and, say, the, uh, the kundalini that comes through me uh, separate is really in the level of uh, control and who is really in charge. And, you know, is it the ego self that knows more about the energetic anatomy of the individual or is it the divine self that, you know, knows more about that area of the body. And I'm always going to go with the divine self. It has no barriers. There is no veil for the divinity within. Okay. Uh, but I agree with a lot of what the Taoists say, and I, and I like a lot of some of, some of the more uh, uh, interesting techniques that allow for a stronger flow of the energy, like tongue up. 
you know, your tongue tip, tip up behind your, behind your upper front teeth, you know, that's a, that allows for a more complete and balanced flow between the upper and the lower. And, that, you know, that's fairly essential and to the degree that genetically uh, many of us that are predisposed towards having the kundalini also have a, a, a resting lingual position that allows that tip to be in constant contact. Constant contact if you're not eating or doing whatever you do. Okay. So the Taoists have some very, very good techniques. Um, their sexual techniques, however, you know, they tend to... Yeah. Well, I guess I have to talk about it. Okay. So in the West, you know, there, there are fairly strong preconceived notions about what is and is not... Uh, uh, a beneficial uh, sexual composure to have within a religious uh, or spiritual seeking uh, equation. Within the Kundalini context, uh, this has been studied and applied in many, many different interpretations within the belief system of Tantra. I say belief system because it's as much a religion as it is a series of uh, positions for for better sex. I mean, it's really not even a, about the better sex. It's it's far more about uh, energizing and balancing and awakening. In some cases, for people, the kundalini within them. In my very first seminar, you know, uh, one person who showed up had received her awakening from having tantric sex. I mean, right, you know, at that. At that moment, you know, she, you know, and her partner didn't awaken, but she did. You see, and so, you know, there's a lot of a lot of disinformation, or sure, let's say misinformation, with regards to tantra and what works and what doesn't work. Uh, you have to you have to take in consideration always, always, always the individual karmic uh, expression of the person. And very, you know, there's not going to be too many psychics that can go up to you and go, oh. Chrism, I see. Oh, oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, gosh, what an amazing past life. Um, because of your past lives, well, you're in a kundalini refinement uh, uh, equation, and, uh, you know, you're going to have to change your life completely, maybe two or three times. That'll be $60 for my, for my 20 second. <laughs> You typically won't. I mean, there, I, I'm not going to say you'll never find a, a psychic who won't be able to, to at least describe to your kundalini, you know, the fact that you are on that refinement path. But most psychics won't be able to do that. Uh, it's, it's really none of their business. Um, within the kundalini context, uh, you will be given very, very, very specific instruction with regard to the, the. Uh, uh, physical mingling aspect of the Tantra. And, uh, of course, in the West, we misinterpret or we kind of, we kind of go and go ahead and edit it. It's just like, well, you know, I don't like what it says about that part of sex. I think I'm just going to change it to where I like it, and I'll just go ahead and do it that way. That's what we do here in the West. That's what a lot of people do. They say, if you don't like it, leave it. And some, for some people, if you don't like it, change it, and then you'll like it. <laughs> well, you're also going to get unexpected consequences as well. These are not little recipes that, that, that have lasted, you know, 10,000 years because, you know, they make people laugh. You know, people have tried these, these situations for thousands and thousands of years, and these are the ones that have worked for people. So don't feel free to go and change a recipe or a or a or a procedure or a practice. Do it the way it has been taught you to do. And furthermore, do it the way your kundalini uh, makes you feel is the correct way method for you to do. And so, you know, which brings us right back to tantra. Tantra for person A is not going to be the same as Tantra for person B. Uh, you know, in the West, it's you know, there's always going to be a level of interest with Tantra because it's a sexual thing. 
And because our society is so pulled uh, this way and that way with the sexual um, maturation occurring within the within the population, whether you could see it or not, <laughs> it is actually maturing for people here in the United States. And and uh, that maturation uh, is just slow, and it's just slow. And you know, we have to get through a lot of the fear ideas and the you know the uh you know some of the readings from some of the holy books that say sex is this or sex is that and you know we are maturing it's just a slow maturation process and a painful one in many ways as we look at genital mutilation and and sharia and and uh you know and and uh and uh you know the the, the bondage of of young people uh, in, you know, enslaved by religious organizations, you know, whether it's in Ireland or Italy or United States or China. Uh, you know, a lot of these things, are, you know, it's all attributable to the one subject of sex. And within the Enlightenment process, uh, people are, as we speak right now, you know, they're, they're working the tantric angle. And I'm supportive of the tantric angle. I think it's very, very important for people to know about themselves and to know what their options are, what, what the greater options are, especially within the kundalini context, uh, where the kundalini can just take your your libido away, gone, never to be seen again as far as the person knows. You know, I get this, the question quite a bit, well, what happened to my libido, Chris? And what, what did I do to make the kundalini angry? You know, I, I I can't I I can't have sex. I'm running out of excuses for my wife. <laughs> you know, and it reminds me of that line from from uh, from uh, Braveheart, where the uh, the French uh, assistant to the to the the. The new queen princess says, the English don't know what a tongue is for. <laughs> well, there's your, there's my very first Tantra joke of the session. Okay. So within the whole ideology of Tantra, it is the, the sacred male and, and the sacred female interacting with each other in such a combination that allows for the kundalini to be awakened. First of all, you're going to have to have a karma that allows for this to happen. And for those of you that are kind of thrown off by the word karma, let's just call it destiny. You'll need a, a, a positive destiny marker uh, you know, to have the kundalini awaken within any kind of practice or, or uh, commitment that a person is making towards that activation or awakening okay karmically uh, or you know from a destiny aspect you're going to need to have a positive uh, uh, indication you know from your higher mental functioning self and your spiritual self that the kundalini is the route that you're going to take typically this is so or you don't even get to to really know the word kundalini it doesn't really it's not really something that comes your way you don't read it in books or magazines or see it on TV. Probably the closest thing you'd come to it is Kundalini Yoga commercials on the Internet or something like that. If that, if that. And so as we, as we practice the Tantra, and a lot of people will read Mantak Chia's work. And Mantak Chia is a guy from China uh, who studied with the Taoists for a number of years. Met a woman, I think, from Thailand who was a Christian and he he changed his religion to Christianity for love. Isn't that romantic? And uh, and so he and his wife have written all these books about the Taoist or the Taoist secrets of of sex, the Taoist secrets of this, this, and that. And and I think you know I think the information they give out is actually quite powerful, quite you know potential for quite a bit. But they have no idea about the kundalini and what it is they're really bringing on to their people when the kundalini is awakened through those techniques. And they don't give any follow-up. They don't give any, I mean, 
it, it is it is what it is. You know, people people will do. Uh, you know, they'll they'll find what they need to find. All right, and I'm looking I'm looking here. Looks like we have a person. I don't, I'm not sure if that's a question coming up or or not. So I will continue. If you do have a question about Tantra or about your Kundalini Awakening experience, any aspect of it, uh, please call in uh, United States Area Code 347-934-0026, 347-934-0026 to call in. And uh looks like uh, I'm going to ask uh, Her Holiness to come on board. So Santara, could you come online? She's waking up. Get up. Get up. I'm up. I'm up. I was speaking with somebody <laughs> on the other line, and I came back. <laughs> oh, they're listening. They're listening. I got you. I got you. Okay. Oh, have you listened? Okay. Yep, I see okay. It. I see it. Thank you, my dear. Go back to sleep. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to Tantra. Um there are many forms of Tantra. Tantra comes in many, many different ways. Tantra, to one uh, one meaning of that word, there are many different meanings of the word Tantra. It's a Sanskrit term. Uh, but Tantra to the West, of course, equals sex. Tantra to someone who's a little more educated in, in uh, what the rishis uh, were putting out, well then, oh, that's a way to to establish self-realization, to become enlightened. You can use Tantra as a way to to honor the sacred marriage between sacred female and sacred male. And through that honoring, uh, not the, the, the physical child is not created, but the angelic child, the kundalini awakening uh, uh, directive is awakened within the person. And that directive, that that consciousness is opened into the body at that time. And, and that consciousness has its agenda. And that agenda is the changing of the, uh, of the complete physiology and uh, psychology, um, the... the uh, the spiritual, the emotional aspects of the human being, completely changing them into a, a, an organism that can handle greater connectivity with the divine source. Now, I'm just putting that in a very, you know, a, shall we say, factual way, as, or scientific way as I can. It's, this is something that is, a, that's the agenda of the kundalini as it begins to awaken. And this is also the the genesis of kriyas, the automatic spontaneous movements, uh, body movements, body positions, the automatic and spontaneous vocalizations of sound, uh, uh, the, 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 um, the kriyas of, of hearing voices or hearing chirps or hearing insects or hearing bees or hearing chanting. That would be an audio kriya. Visions would be, you know, a visual crypt. So visions being seen floating across, you know, faces staring at you or, or, or uh, suns, you know, really bright lit, tiny little pinpoint suns flying around the room or flying around you. Blue. Uh, blue is a typical, one of the typical colors. White gold is another color. Uh, silver and gold play. Silver, gold, and uh, purple play a very significant uh, position in a lot of these visions. Iridescent colors, colors that seem to be lit up by by a, a brilliant source, uh, something that is really, really a flash uh, would would occur as a flash upon the the uh, virtual optic nerve uh, uh, with eyes closed. So, like the memory. The function of memory can provide a person with a brilliant flash. And so because of those engrams uh, and because they're being caused, these engrams are being formed around a kundalini ideology or experience. Uh, you know, these things can be very, very sharp in how they 
how they continuously expose themselves to a person within the memory format, but also within the actual event occurring format. And so this this all ties back to Tantra as well. Okay, You don't just have sex. Tantra is not just about having sex. You know, it's it's the left-hand path, as I think I mentioned before. It's the left-hand path. It, it's the sacred feminine, the path of the honoring of the sacred feminine, and most importantly, the honoring of the marriage between sacred male and sacred feminine. And a lot of these, you know, because of the um, the uh, United States citizenship being so twisted and fearful and uh, generally angry and you know fearful about sex, uh, here in the West, they they come out with different forms of tantra, like doing tantra with your clothes on, or or uh, you know energetic tantra and things of that nature. And and you know I've done a lot of tantra in my life, and it's 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 a worthy exploration if you can really be honest with yourself about it. Uh, if you can come in honesty, honestly with your emotions, first of all, you need emotional maturation. Or you need to be in a process of emotional uh, maturation. By that I mean uh, the, because of your practice of Tantra, it's not just a sexual event. It's a, it's a lifestyle. And so as you live this lifestyle, uh, the Kundalini and your higher mental functioning self begin to play a role in your training towards kundalini awakening. And part of that training will be to begin to initiate uh, spiritual practices into uh, and blending with the the sexual practice. So, for instance, uh, for those of you uh, who are familiar with a mantra, a mantra is a a sentence or a, a couple of phrases or a phrase that that are a vocalization of, a, of, of, of something of spiritual merit. Okay. I am at one with the all that I am is a mantra. I am at one with the all that I am. And so as you are, as you are with your spouse or your intended or the person that you love, and you're engaging in Tantra. And, the, and I mean physical, fully, what do they call it? Fully, uh, physical, fully penetrating Tantra. Okay, full penetration Tantra. Uh, as you are doing that, uh, you are, uh, I'm going straight into music here. Uh as you say the mantra, certain creative forces are coming together within the physical action of the merging between the two. And, you know, um, for the for the male, there are seven glands that contribute to the formation of uh, of a of a spiritual physical plasma sperm and semen can be seen as physical energetic plasmas uh, these 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 are forces that individually have their own energetic signature but when these substances are mixed together the energetic signatures embrace each other forming a very powerful uh, and yet uh, Powerful yet very, what's the word? Um, uh, it's a powerful event, yet it is, it is a very brief moment of time. But it's a replicable event, and so that moment of time can be extended. But, the, boy, this is so hard to describe. Anyway, so... Uh, as we, as I'm going to take a bounce into astrology right now. Okay, so the astrological clock is always ticking. You know, you're always moving day in, day out, day in, day out through the different uh, uh, manifestations of the astrological uh, understandings. 
And so when I say it's a, it's a replicable event, you know, the very next day you can do the same thing. Well, you can't do the very same thing the very next day because each moment in time is a very unique and precious jewel that cannot ever be replicated. It can be recorded to some degree, but it cannot be replicated. It cannot be replicated. And so for me to say that, well, okay, you can do... You can do fully penetrating uh, Tantra and, you know, if it doesn't work that day, well, you can do it the next night or the next day. It's not that way. I'm not suggesting that at all because there's, there's so many things that change uh, by agreement uh, with the, with the, uh, the uh, you know, with the days and the nights as they proceed through the calendars and through the seasons and through the equinox and the solstice. You know, it's a very, very, very uh, conscious developmental opportunity that we have by being in a body and being subject to astronomical time counts and, uh, you know, Julian calendar time, time counts and, uh, and, and gravitational time counts and Kundalini-based time counts. You know, we have all these different time frequencies to adjust to, but we do it naturally, no worries, to most of us. If you're inside a phenomena uh, from the Kundalini that kind of screws around with your understandings of time, don't panic. It's temporary. Trust in your Kundalini. If you have a teacher and the teacher knows what they're talking about, then trust in that teacher. Okay, that's why you're with them. And that's why the Kundalini is with you. Nobody that has Kundalini awakened or activated is without a teacher. The internal teacher is always there. And that will be the Kundalini. It's the internal teacher that locates the external teacher. Not the other way around. You understand? It's the internal teacher that locates the external teacher. Okay, I just want you to kind of wrap your mind around that. Okay, so as we get back to Tantra, I am going to suggest that you and your loved one, uh, if you're going to follow Tantra, that you need to follow Tantra, you need to follow the rules of Tantra. And in the Kundalini Awakening uh, aspect, those seven components that the that is developed by the female and the male, indi- independent of each other, when they come together, they form that unity. They form that two that is one, that one that is two. And a- a- so, as you're as you're in the process of that, without the the obvious exploding um, uh, climax. I want you to deprive yourself of that. Take yourself and back off from that. So in a sense, what you're doing is you're charging a capacitor. Okay, You're taking one uh, unit of voltage, putting it through a capacitor, and you're coming out with a greater level of voltage at the other end of that capacitor so when you take yourself up to the edge of that explosion and then gently walk back without fluidic release for men I don't want you to have fluidic release and typically the women will not have uh, the you know a, a, a similar fluidic release uh, using different fluids now, you, you can't, you know, the, the lubrication aspect is just going to be what it is. And that is not classified in the same way as some of the more luminous fluids uh, that either gender can, can, uh, can express. Okay. And this is a luminous practice. Don't, don't mistake it at all. This is a luminous practice. This is a practice that is designed to bring you into grace. And and, you know, talking about being brought into grace for a little bit here, you know, it's not the easiest place to just come, you know, uh, knocking on the door. You have to really begin to to understand that it is not the way that your books and your ideologies and your fantasies may have made it into. 
It's not Disneyland. Okay? Some parts of it may make you think you're in Disneyland. But it's not Disneyland, and it's not, you know, happy, happy fairy dust sprinkling over marshmallows and cotton candy floating down a, a, a little stream of chocolate with, Marshmallow bunnies feeding on the banks. No. No marshmallow bunnies with the kundalini. Well, I take it back. Sometimes you'll get those marshmallow bunnies. If you're really... <laughs> if you're into all that sugar. Okay. Um, but it's typically a, a challenging path challenges your basic understandings of life and reality so for those of you that are involved in tantra and you know you're you're making headway with tantra really begin to make headway with the practice of the safeties you're going to want to do that remember the safeties were written by the kundalini for those coming into the kundalini they work they're effective but you got to do them. For those of you that are continuing with Tantra, uh, regardless, uh, I want you to, uh, to feel free to, to say your mantras. I am at one with the all that I am, or Om Namaha Shivaya Om, uh, or, or even just saying the A-U-M, Aum, you know, as, as, you're, uh, as you're, you're inside of the merging. Do this. Bring God into it. Bring divinity into it. Those are the most important aspects. Not whether or not, you know, (laughs) my computer just showed me a picture of the CERN giant in England, C-E-R-N-E giant, just as I was saying that. And uh, for those of you that uh, look up the CERN giant, C-E-R-N-E giant, uh, in England, you'll, you'll kind of get a kick out of what I just said. If you look that up in Google and go to image, you'll exactly understand why I'm kind of laughing at that. Um, it should feel good, too. It should feel really good. Uh, don't buy in to... Anything that doesn't resonate with your kundalini in a positive way. And and let's really, really begin to discern what is kundalini and what might be an entity. And this is, once again, another area where the safeties can really come in handy. Because if you're following the noble behaviors, forgiveness, loving service, helpfulness, compassion, honesty, truth, all of these things. If you're following those actions, then... You'll attract those teachings that will help you strengthen those attitudes. Okay? And so sometimes, you know, sometimes those challenging attitudes, you know, people will classify as bad or terrible because it made them change. It made them think. It made them act in a way that they were not used to acting in or comfortable with. Uh, And this will happen within the tantric range as well. Uh, for instance, it's the, the sacred male is usually in contact with the earth. It is the sacred feminine that comes down and, and, and dances on the stage of the sacred male. And the sacred male should just hold still. And let the magic of the Shakti begin to control his uh, levels of rigidity and flexibility and whatnot. You see, and this is very different than, than you know how how your typical uh, United States conception of that activity is. Um, and you can say the mantras, and you can say the uh, the affirmations. You can say things like "I love you" or. You know, I give myself to you. You know, you can say the affirmations to the divine. You can say the word Shakti, Shiva, Jesus, Mary. I mean, whatever the sacred fem- feminine and male in you is, you can you can say. 
you have permission. God is not going to frown on you for bringing bringing God and goddess into the actions that are you know reflected by God and goddess when Kundalini awakens. As above so below. As below so above, as without so within, as within so without. If you have any questions about this aspect of the Kundalini Awakening journey, please feel free to call in at 347, that's the United States area code, 347-934-0026, 347-934-0026. And as you have these thoughts and if you have these feelings, if your Kundalini wants you doing Tantra, then guess what? It, that will be arranged for you in your sleep as well as in your waking moments. Your teacher or an ideology of the sacred female or the sacred male will come to you in the dream life and you will have those passionate cravings uh, uh, engaged in your evolutionary process during those moments. During those moments. And you'll be given instruction on whether, whether or not it wants you to seek anyone outside of its internal presence within you. And I'll suggest that you wait for that confirmation. Now, as you bring yourself up to the edge in the tantric format now, we're, we're in the middle of the merge, and we're bringing ourselves up to a great energetic explosion uh, that typically culminates in, in uh, the, the expression of luminous fluids. Don't let that occur, men. Take a step back. Take a step back. Go get a glass of water. I want you to keep that charge in you, and this goes for the women as well. I want you to keep that charge in you. Because as you build up those charges, those charges will begin to, to condense and coalesce into a channel that will begin to mature a kundalini awakening event for that individual. Every time we have sex with a person, a part of us is, is left with that person. Every single time. I don't care if you're a prostitute. I don't care if you're whatever it is. If you've had physical sex with another person that way, there's a certain aspect of you that is imprinted upon the other and vice versa. Sex is as natural as breathing, as walking barefoot, as, you know, swimming through the ocean. It is nothing to be... Uh, diluted with fear or anger or hatred or or uh, any kind of of a hurtful bonded restriction sex is a gift of god to this species so that this species may evolve not only from a physical basis of having children but also in a spiritual way of having enlightenment having aspects of enlightenment visited upon us within us all the time giving us that drive to evolve giving us that urge to to seek out and understand if this is how you are practicing the tantra then I encourage you to continue that practice for men uh, I want you to idolize and 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 Give your love and give your attentions, your emotional attentions and your physical attentions to the sacred feminine in your life. Women, the same for the sacred male in your life. Make it a point. And honor that point. No pun intended. Tantra is a very, very clean, very, very good, uh, healthy way to come into sacred knowledge that you need to have anyway with the Kundalini. 
And I'm talking about fully penetrative uh, sexual tantra. I'm not talking about this, oh, you can keep your underwear on. How many girls have heard that line? <laughs> oh, you can keep your underwear on. So, <laughs> sorry. nobody's laughing on the uh, on the flash chat. I better I better shut up now. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, for those of you you know that that can afford a practice. Uh, of, of, of a tantric nature by having a partner, then honor that partner. Say, say, bring the spiritualism into this. Bring, bring the mantras into this. Bring the connection into this. Make it a viability and a validation within you. Do you understand? Take it joyfully and take it seriously. People have a lot of problems, you know, with Tantra because it goes against, say, a Christian format or you know, there are there are forms of Christian Tantra. You can you can go through the gospels, you can go through the the, uh, the uh, King James and uh, you can find levels of Tantra, you know, all over the place in the Bible. It's just how we choose to focus on our holy books that holds our attention. And somebody decided that uh, we were going to make sex and love and, and uh, enlightenment through the practices of sex and love either a secret affair or a forbidden affair or both. Certainly within the context of the formation of the United States. We have to make it secret so that we can have to basically it's kind of what it's saying. Well, I'm saying no. No. The only person we need to have power over is ourself. And that's going to come through a complete understanding of ourselves. And that includes our sexual selves as well. Now, I say all this, and you know, and I'm giving people, I think, a lot of permission to have the tantric... Uh, uh, experience and I think it's once again I do support the experience it's a great experience uh, but it will bring things up in your space that you're not used to having to deal with uh, issues of taboo issues of blockage issues of emotional abuse issues of abandonment issues all kinds of different issues can come up for people that are that are attempting to walk the tantric path people people will hate you for teaching them Tantra. I have a lot of people that don't appreciate Christum because they were taught Tantra in the way they asked to, te- to be taught it, and yet they refused to do any of the emotional or psychological balances that came with it. And so they had an implosion event, and, you know, you know, they're, you know, they're all full of blame. They're all full of blame. Some didn't even have it. They just want to be full of blame. All I can do is, is give the experience, give the information that I'm that I'm allowed to give. And, you know, you are going to have to do some of that work. Even listening to my voice right now, as we mentioned, I think, last week, even as you hear this voice inside your head, is the kundalini that resonates through me and that has resonated through, you know, so many different other people is resonating through you right now. The oneness that is, is what you're becoming. The two that are one and the one that is two. Tantra is only there if you want to practice it that way. You can also just practice the safeties. You can turn your safeties practice into your own form of tantric practice for anyone that has a question about this subject or any other subject that pertains to the kundalini call 347-934-0026 and as i mentioned before this may bleed into your dream life and so you need to understand this um it's it's been difficult 
throughout the years with the dream aspect of it. Sometimes the kundalini will come uh, in the shape of a teacher that a person has become exposed to. So that would be me. Uh, the kundalini comes dressed or, you know, as looking like for some. And then that person, you know, they there's a, an engagement that occurs, you know, say a tantric engagement or a physical sexual type thing. And, you know, I will get blamed for invading a person's space. And I, as a corporeal individual, had nothing to do with this, or really even as an energetic individual. It, it's not like astral, projecting, you know, astral projection, where you can go out and you can look to have sex with other people. Kundalini is not that way. You don't necessarily get to have sex unless your kundalini wants you to have sex. And so, you know, in the dream state, I have many, many other things that I'm doing in the dream state. It keeps me very busy and... and they don't include coming to you and, and you know, uh, having those favors uh, presented either way, you know, uh, them to me or me to them. Uh, so it's always the kundalini. Always the kundalini. Unless the kundalini states otherwise. So the question comes to you, which one are you going to honor? Are you going to honor your fear, your trepidation? about, oh, what is this chrism doing? Or are you going to honor that which is within you already, your kundalini? That's the question that you get to ask yourself. And I will suggest, I'm going to influence you, how you, how you answer that question for you. I'm going to influence this intentionally. I would suggest that you not buy into fear. That you not buy into terror. That you not buy into somebody else's fear. Don't buy into fear that you don't own. And that's easy to do because... Because we tend to to really look at fear as an as a very easy thing to slip into. Don't do that. Don't go there. You don't need to. Unless you do. So some of those people that that uh, had a dream and Kristen came into the dream and the and the and the Shakti was was you know, manifesting Kristen to that person in that dream and that person got all upset and, and decided that Kristen was a really bad person. There you have it. That's welcome to my life. And this happens, I mean, I, I don't know how many people are positively helped by uh, these radio broadcasts or by, um, you know, uh, what what Glenn Ola's website is doing, the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. Um, I get a lot of positive emails too, but you know it's it's those squeaky wheels that you want to get the oil after, and so yeah yeah, um, you know you're going to find people that are very unhappy and very imaginative in in describing their their discontent with with Tantra and how I teach Tantra or Kundalini, how I teach Kundalini. Um, and that is just as it is. I mean, they've got their opinion. Anybody can lie on the Internet. You know, I could go back and I could attack them and just, you know, use blatant lies if they have done. But that would be contradicting my own teachings. So I just forgive them and let it go and let this be the the environment that the Shakti has given me to do her work in. And that too is a practice of Tantra. Accepting what the Shakti is giving you to learn from. Accepting what your Kundalini is giving you to learn from. And doing this with as much grace as you can possibly manage. As much... Um, 
as much of a of a gift of kindness and compassion that you can give to others during periods of upset for yourself also help to 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 uh dislodge your own internal uh, uh issue emotional issue Yeah, bring uh, Centara on here. Centara, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Stress. <laughs> that was that was um, a snoring sound effect. <laughs> that was that was a Centara yes, snore. Okay, a Kunda <laughs> snore. <laughs> So has the sound been coming through all right? Is is everything manifesting the way we would like it to come through? Yes, the sound is excellent, actually. Um, very good. No interference or, or you know echoes or anything like that. So very good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Uh, have you had any experiences that uh, that that you are able to to talk about that would allow you to comment on tantra or anything like that? Hmm. You can, it's well, okay my, if you dear, say my no. dear, my dear, no, it's okay. My dear husband is waiting, is in the other room, as he often is when I'm doing this show, and I'm sure he's holding his breath. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tell him that. <laughs> don't worry, John. <laughs> um, I suppose I would like to share something that, you know, I'm not going to get into any, you know, but I would like to share that um, after my awakening, um, event of my awakening experience, Kundalini brought me to Tantra. And ah. it became something, yeah, something that I had no real um, knowing about um, from, from exactly what you've been speaking about, you know, where, um, you know, honoring the other, the sacred male, the sacred female, <laughs> and actually worshipping and, and being devotional really to the divinity yeah. within each of us and um, with breath and body and heart and touch and voice and all the senses um, you know became something that I I hadn't Kundalini brought me to that and and it was a wonderful surprise to my dear husband <laughs> oh. um, because neither of us had known of this previously, you know, to come to know divinity through this and, and to bring the divine, I suppose, into our being together, you know. Um, it has been very, it is another aspect, it isn't, I won't say it's another aspect, but it is a devotional thing and it is a worshipping and it is, you know, unity, it is, it's, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful experience, it is indeed. Well, good. Well, it, that's, it, it, all, it, that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, put you in the blue here. <laughs> all right. Well, there you go. There you go. Now, see now, for those of you that that have a another half, a you know, a wife or a boyfriend, girlfriend, I mean, husband. Uh, really, 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 you can delve deeply into the Kundalini. You can delve deeply into it. Uh, in many cases, the uh, if you're living with a uh, with one spouse that has kundalini and the other spouse that doesn't have the kundalini, uh, if you've been able to find balance within that awakening, uh, like like John and Amelia have, uh, then then you know the there will be a passage of some kundalini. You know, as the people experience that type of emerge, uh, there is going to be passage of kundalini. But the kundalini, as we have been saying for a long time is intelligent it knows what's going on and so in a, in a way uh, <coughs> it knows that say in, in Amelia's scenario uh, John can't really afford to have awakening at this time in his life you know somebody's got to you know to lock the door and, and make the rounds in the middle of the night right I mean you know there are responsibilities that that people have as a nurturer and those that are being nurtured. And, you know, kids are, are, are a great uh, symbol of this, that, you know, the child always needs to be nurtured. And yet through the nurturing is the, is the adult 
uh, given the opportunity to to give from levels of love that are not accessible for everyone. And uh, uh, feel free to call 347-934-0026 if you'd like to add your voice to this conversation. Um, looks like we have... Oh, yes, okay, yes. So we have some folks that are listening on the phone. And uh, I'd like to say hello to Eileen right now. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Chrism. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So have you been enjoying the conversation, or do you have anything you'd like to add? Well, you had brought this up before. You talk in terms of partners. Not everybody has a partner. And I know but, that but, there but are contracts. Eileen, you have the manatee. Not everybody has a manatee. <laughs> That's true. And actually, they may become unendangered, which is wonderful. So, well, see, so yeah, you and your manatee friend can have as much freedom as you need. Yeah. No, but seriously, it would be nice if, if you would address uh, All right. I will, individuals. Uh, thank you. Okay. All right, all right. Well, let's do that right now, my dear. So thank you for bringing that up, and I'm going to go into that right now. Thank you. All right, you're welcome, my dear. You're welcome. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, not every not everybody's going to have partners for this, but that doesn't mean that you can't practice tantra. It just means that there are levels of of learning through the kundalini experience that happens on an individual level that is calling to you first. Uh, sometimes it's a it's the equation of you know. Uh, know thyself first before you know thyself in a different way. Um, know thyself in in the basic way. I, sh- I, I should re-stipulate that, that. Know the basics of who you are. Know those basics before you assume that you can you can know the basics of how you are uh, beyond that that basic level. In other words, get to know the building blocks of the person that you are. And one way to do that really is, as Eileen suggested, is tantra with the self. Tantra with the self. I'm not talking about masturbation. I'm talking about energetic exercise in a way. Uh, So a man, say the, the guy's out, you know, the in Antarctica and he doesn't have anybody there to be happy with and and uh you know what does this person do that is searching and going for kundalini yet he's a scientist out there in Antarctica the 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 closest base is McMurdo Airport Air Force base what do you do well okay you begin to use what the divine has given you to use ah Nerissa uh just a second Nerissa I'll be right with you you begin to you begin to to use what the divine has given you to use you you begin to to take education from the the from the kundalini within but you got to be careful you know there are a lot of entities that will feed off of sexual energies and and they're also skulking around here and there uh but if if you're not fantasizing about dominating another person or raping another person or, you know, doing these types of sexual manipulations that are hurtful and violent to another person, well, the Kundalini can really respond well to self-exploration uh, in the levels that Eileen uh, is, is bringing up. But, okay, I'm just going to keep it at that point. For that time here, I'm going to bring Nerissa on. Hello, Nerissa. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, I don't Nerissa? know. I'm just thinking into. Hello. Nerissa, can you turn your computer down? Yeah. <laughs> All right. There we go. Hey. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay. What's going on? Um, I've just been like 
I don't know, it's only been about a month for me that I've really been getting into all this, and I see the changes in myself and of my past self, and I don't know, I, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and I see all my past actions going and, you know, shaping them. I was just wondering how to help them, I suppose. Well, and I what keep you do the is... answer that I have to help myself, but I never know when I'm quite at that point. Well, here's here's what you do. I mean, have you had a chance to look through the safeties at all? Yeah, I just found the Tibetans actually a couple of days ago. I've been doing those uh, daily, and I always thought, you know, oh, well, I, I'm awake, but I guess I really, my kundalini isn't fully awake, I suppose. I don't know. Um, yeah, that doesn't really matter. What really matters is your level of practice of the noble qualities. Now, the noble qualities, as you practice those, so will your your children begin mm-hmm. to practice those. So let the noble qualities of of uh, of love and forgiveness, compassion, tolerance, patience, honesty, uh, just start with those six. Right, and then they'll kind of pass on and on to my kids and that's myself. Exactly. And the nice thing about your situation, Narissa, is you're recognizing the importance of this. And your kundalini is allowing you to see its manifestation in your kids, which is a mm-hmm. great teaching tool for you. Mm-hmm. Right. How, how to modulate your expression as a parent around your kids that demonstrates positive, positive right. uh, behaviors from them and, but don't forget that they're going to have negative behaviors too with little kids you have to realize that they got to go through the you know both ends of the uh, of the of the paradigm they have to experience the extreme bad and extreme good right right so they, right. So they Which, know so they know the difference but they don't necessarily have to do that all the all the time through mom okay mm-hmm. mom does not need to be the mirror of the of the of the negativity that that person's going to go through it's much like say having an alcoholic parent you know mm-hmm. you know and we'll say it's a really bad experience well the children get to see what not to do every single night and that right. turns in you know and, and what does that do to their life right mm-hmm. well what would happen right. if you took alcohol out of the equation and you inserted the safety practices for kundalini awakening mm-hmm You'd have we'd have a nation of saints. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we're shooting for here. That's well, we'll just call it Saint Nation. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that's my new TV series. <laughs> oh yeah, you get a lot of viewers that way. Eh? Saint Nation, that's right. So 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 the thing is, Nerissa is is you need to start practicing those noble qualities all purposefully. Right. And then I see right. how see, old were they? Before I even uh, seen the safeties, which was really astonishing to me. Like, I didn't know there were safeties. I knew there was a Kundalini, but I didn't know of the safeties. But when I actually read them, I was actually doing a lot of things without even being told. Like, he might come up on my list, you right. know. Right. I was just going to say, tongue up. Yeah. You have to remember, that's what I, I wrote about at the beginning of the show. I don't know if you've been here since the beginning, but uh, the Kundalini itself wrote the safeties. Mm-hmm. And the very fact right. that, I mean, I mean and, and what you just said is a great validation of the truth of that statement. I mean, the, the, the kundalini is, is really the, the force that's in charge. Mm-hmm. And uh, it wrote what you needed to, you, what you and others needed to hear at the time with regards to, you know, what to do with the tongue tip and, you know, what to do with the eyes or the fingertips or the chin or, you know, any of those various things that we go through with the safeties. But if you practice right. the safeties, including the five Tibetans with your children, if you sit mm-hmm. your children around the, the kitchen table and you go, okay, Johnny, who did you forgive today? What happened? And you talk to them about their forgiveness. And you, you talk to them about what happened and, and you congratulate them for being forgiving. You congratulate them for being tolerant of other people. Right. Uh, and you really begin to to bring levels of wisdom into their upbringing that would have otherwise gone missing. Right, right, right. And see, that's what I think a lot of the time is, you know, we 
we always talk about living through the heart and healing yourself, but in the past, we really were never taught how to do it. We were just taught to do it, you know, told to do it. Mm. Well, it, yeah, it's, it, yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. And that, that, that kind of goes back to, to, to I think, Eileen's uh, discussion about what to do without having a partner. Do you have a partner or are you a single mom? Um, yeah, I have one. He's not as into everything, but he's supportive, so I don't know how much. He's hey, going to be into if it's, not. If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> right, right. But I really do appreciate all your advice, though. So. Oh, no, no, no. Is it, yeah. You're really the helpful. new one. You're, you're, are you the same Nerissa on the Facebook group? Yes, yes, I am. Yay, yay. Nice, nice, to, nice to, to hear you. It's great. And you, and you yeah. gave some people... You gave some very good advice uh, the other night, and I just want to validate that. Uh, well, thank that, you. That, uh, yeah, very good advice for people. Do you remember what it was? Um. Yeah, kind of just. I Go don't ahead. Know tell, you... tell it to the folks right now because it's good advice. Well, you know, a lot of people they get stressed out, they get away from themselves, and they just become discouraged. And it's like I said to a fellow person, you know. When you have a house plant, you can skip a day of watering it. You can skip a day of meditation of the Tibetans, but on that day it starts to droop. You can skip another day. Well, then the flower begins to wilt, you know, and you can keep skipping it. But all you have to do to bring it back to health is simply water it, give it time and attention. That was my advice. That's really good advice. Excellent advice, uh, Nurse. So thank you, thank you, and thank you for giving it to the people here. I think you're in pretty. I think you're in good shape, Nurse. But the thing is, is, is the hard part of being a parent with Kundalini is you need to really not only watch what you say or what you do around the kids, mm-hmm. but watch what you're thinking around the kids. Right, right. Because they're they're yeah. going to pick up those thoughts. Those thoughts are just frequencies, and we, yeah. you know. Be very careful what um, you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, I, I've really come to realize that, you know, it's, it's like a cycle, you know, once you get in a vicious cycle, it's really, really hard have to a, break that. It can be do, done. Do you, have, do you have a tree in your backyard that you like? Uh, yeah, I have a tree right right in the middle of my my yard, actually. Do you, do you ever go to the tree and just lean against it? Yes, I, I actually I go outside barefoot a lot. Like I really like to breathe in just that that energy, that clean, fresh, you know, yeah, mother nature. Yeah, yeah, that prana. So I suggest you go out to that tree, and you begin to forgive yourself mm-hmm. through any any perception of, of of not you know being as good as you. Uh, a, a parent as you might want to be or being as good a mate or a spouse as you might want to be, whatever, I want you to forgive yourself and let your kids see you doing this. And if they come over and they ask, Mom, what are you doing? You just have to mm-hmm. tell them the truth. I'm forgiving myself, honey. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then very, you can show uh, them how to do it. You show them how to right, do it. Right, very you know. encouraging. Yeah, but it's yeah, all about inspiration. Yeah. It really seems to be, you know, just positive reinforcement. Well, really, because there's enough negative reinforcement in the world as it is. Yes, right, okay. right. Matter of fact, uh, there's a little, uh, it's, a, it's a little out of balance towards the negative, which gives us right. a good reason to insert the positive. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm often laughed at. I really am, but it really? it does kind of get to me. But at the same time, I know that this needs to happen. I know that we need to heal. I know that there are better things than you know. I well, know. I, I I hope I hope you're not laughed at. Uh, well, I guess the laughter is serving its purpose for you as well. It's it's right. causing you to be forgiving and to be tolerant. Right. Right. Yep. Okay, and and you know it's it's just nice to 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 know that you know there are really good parents like you and like Julie and Elizabeth and and uh, Amelia who are able to walk the talk in front of their kids. Right. 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 Well, thank you. I, I really do appreciate all of your 
energy and your encouragement and your advice. It's it's helpful, really. Well, I really, really know that you're doing great, Nerissa. You're doing really well. For a person to be able to come up with that excellent advice about watering the flower, watering the garden, it's so true. It's so true. Keep your garden strong. Keep your kundalini strong. Water it every day with that safety's practice. Right, and, and I think uh, that's what it comes down to. I think so. I agree. I agree. And and I just want to invite you uh, back to the show again, Nerissa. All right. Keep well, thank it, you. Keep us updated, okay? All right. Will do. Mm, bye. Okay, bye. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, so there you have it. I mean, it's very, very, very uh, uh, strong teaching there. Water the plant, my friends. Water the plant. Practice the safety. Now, we're, as we go back into the tantric uh, uh, areas here, it really there, there there are some tantra positions that a person can adopt during the uh, during the uh, the exchange and the blending. But it's really more of uh, the position of the heart, the position of the heart leading the mind, leading the uh, the instinct. Uh, hey, hello, Bruno. Good to see you here, my friend. Uh, leading the actions of the autonomic systems of reproduction. So let let the technique follow the heart. Let the mind follow the heart. Let the heart lead the way within the the tantric experience. Not and and let that as much as possible be in balance. Don't you know, I would encourage a person not to find a partner uh that is not at least equally in in love with them as they are as they are with that person. I mean I as much as possible have a balance you know, not not a uh, uh, not as much, shall we say, of a codependency. Yet, so so it also takes the right combination of two people. So you 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 add the combination of the two people. You add the combination of the of the uh, destiny or the karma. You add the level of intention within the practice. You add the 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 interest in doing the practice on a daily or nightly level and then and then you have a high degree of propensity for kundalini okay yeah there's a lot going on with this it's not just put a quarter in the machine and turn the handle <laughs> this is this is the machine putting a quarter in you and turning the handle of your tailbone Okay, so really understand that. Really, really get to know that, and get to know that in a very, very real way. The Kundalini is the person in charge, not your ego. Within the tantric uh, understandings, uh, tantra and the sacred feminine—that is Kundalini. That is Kundalini. Sacred male aspect is just not quite as emphasized as it is, say, in the uh, the patriarchal systems. With the Kundalini awake within you, it will begin to steer you into the certain practices that are beneficial to you and your Kundalini awakening uh, equation. Just listen to what Narissa was saying. You know, she hadn't come across the safeties before. You know, she was given the link. You know, she, you know, her Kundalini is teaching her. You know, and remember Fashti, Fashti who came online and who is here today. Hello again, Fashti. You know, and Fashti and all his very, very interesting experiences, the Kundalini is teaching him. And sometimes the teachings are directly from the Kundalini, sometimes they're given to the teacher, and then the teacher is, is to give that, that teaching to the individual. But when the, within the tantric sense, it's really a, a surrendering of yourself to the sacred feminine within you, and within your partner. Okay. Within you and within your partner.
some people, some people go, oh, you know, I don't like to, to you know, to take I love you, honey, out of my out of my experience with my with my loved one, and I'm not asking you to do that. But if you're practicing tantra, I am going to ask you to expand that. Expand that, oh, I love you, honey, to the sacred gender and into honoring that sacred gender within your, 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 the other person and yourself. Make sure you do the work. Make sure you do the emotional safety. Make sure you're an active, forgiving, tolerant, honest individual. Seriously, folks, this is, this is, you know, why, why people have such a problem, you know, with Tantra in general or Tantra teachers is because, you know, they're talking about something, number one, that is taboo, and number two, uh, they're talking about something that is so powerful that it can emotionally begin to blow a person out of balance. And if you're not practicing emotional safety, such as forgiveness, tolerance, patience, meditation, silence, if you're not practicing any of those five qualities, you're you're setting yourself up for a real problem. One of my big sins as a teacher is not being a policeman to the degree that I need to be. Never was much for that. But I still pay for that lapse. I still pay for that. You don't need to. You can come into Tantra clean and pure and excellent. Excellent in the way you hear your Kundalini. Excellent in the way you embark and you explore on the journey that the Kundalini is going to lead you into. Excellence in your surrender and your total sublimation to the will and the agenda of the Kundalini as best you can in your life at this point as best you can in your life at this point. Tantra is a, is a powerful way to approach the Kundalini. It's a very powerful way. It deals with taboo subjects in the West and in England and Ireland and, you know, the West being basically, I guess, everything West of, of India. Seriously. Um... Tantra, you know, Tantra is not seen as as holy and pure when it should be. It is holy. It is pure. It is there to help you awaken the Kundalini in a way that allows you to understand the gifts of surrender and the gifts of of, uh, the Kundalini divine agenda upon you rather than having it come on to you unbeknownst and, and, and frightening. Let it come to you in a way that 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 nurtures the divine within you, that allows you to learn, allows you to actively participate. You're not just getting on your knees and going, oh, God, send me that lottery ticket. You're not doing that. With Kundalini, you're, you're going, oh, God, don't send me that lottery ticket. <laughs> I like things nice and simple. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but you're not. You're not praying to God in a way to give you something. You're giving something to God by praying and by manifesting a prayer that includes the luminous fluids that is giving God to God. That is recognizing God within and God without. God God inside and God outside. Do you see that? Do you understand that? Any questions about that? If there are any questions, call me at 347-934-0026. We're coming to the end of the program here. 16 minutes left. So anybody who would like to call, I, I would like to encourage you to call. Uh, looks, I, we have a nice group of people here. Really nice energy. Very nice energy. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to move on. I'm going to segue. Uh, oh, oh, also, okay, here's my – guess I'm not going to segue. Uh, in the West, we are inundated with – what's the word? Um, pornography. We are in, inundated with pornography. Our sexual opportunities and choices are being made for us based upon the lowest – you know, some of the lowest standards of appreciation. So I would do your best to steer clear of pornography. I would rather have you uh, self-stimulate to a positive fantasy than to, you know, self-stimulate in your mind to a negative example. Okay? Okay. Let everything be respectful and let everything be of love. Okay, do your best to stay within those parameters. Okay, and so, oh, hi, Suka, you're typing. So within those parameters of respect and, and uh, validation of who you are and how you are, how we all are, uh, really focus on your surrender. So in, in a way, respectfully surrender yourself to the Kundalini. Respectfully give yourself into this process with respect, with self-respect. The Kundalini knows the moral code that you live in right now in your society. If you're from Italy, well, there's a certain cultural norm. If you're from Croatia or Bosnia, there's a certain cultural norm. If you're from France, there's a certain cultural norm. If you're from Ireland or England, Spain, Finland, Scandinavia, there are different cultural norms in in all of those areas. And the Kundalini knows all of them. It knows your cultural norm. If you're in India, it knows that you live in a society that, you know, that practices some hurtful things upon women. And so, it may begin to outline a certain method of interaction with femininity in your life that is of a more positive bent. Bye bye. Okay. Bye, Suka. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta write a smiley face here. There we go. I think that worked. Well. How does that not work? It worked. Certain smiley faces there. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Oh. Thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let let the noble qualities begin to create your reality. I mean, that's basically what we're coming down to. Even within the tantric equation, let the noble qualities infatuate themselves or insert themselves into uh, the emotional divine qualities of tantric expression. And I'm talking about fully penetrative tantric expressions here. I'm not talking about going through the clothes or any of those things. And you know, that's to me that's just people well never mind. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the real deal, the the where the rubber meets the road, shall we say? Oh God, that was a terrible, terrible Okay, anyway, I'm gonna stop with those. Uh <laughs> Okay, so with the Tantra, it's very powerful, it's very unique. And getting back to, to Eileen's concern a little bit here, you know, what do you do if, if, if you're a single person and you want to practice Tantra? Explore yourself, number one. Don't give yourself satisfaction, number two. Do not have a luminous, fluidic uh, response. Save that for your Kundalini. When the kundalini comes, when it begins, when it takes that spark that you're handling it, 
through through not giving yourself that satisfaction. When when all those sparks add up and they create a larger spark to to affect your kundalini, well then you'll you'll be very thankful. It's very similar to uh, a buddy of mine worked for the Air Force, the United States Air Force, and they had this one airplane that you could only start with two very large automotive engines to turn the motor of this very powerful aircraft. And this is like this is this is what you're doing is you're you're providing a, a little car engine every time you deny yourself the explosion of luminous fluids. Okay? Every time you deny yourself that way, uh <laughs> Is that Mike Strong wrote Californication style Tantra? Gosh, I haven't even seen that. Is it about Tantra, Mike? That show? Is it about Tantra? I hope. Oh, where did everybody go? Wow. Did I lose everybody? No, Chris, and we can hear you, and the chat room is still up, and Mike is typing, and Bruno okay. says he's still here, so, yeah. Oh, okay, thank you, everyone, thank you. Yeah, I just lost all my online users, so I, I have no idea who it is. Uh, thank you, Fashi, thank you, Bruno, thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah, 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 so I, I haven't seen the, the show Californication-style Tantra, but, but uh, it's Anything that has Californication in it, I can pretty much read between the lines. Uh, <laughs> oh, I see. It is a term I use for the way sexology is marketed as Tantra. That's a very good point, Mike. Gosh, with eight minutes left in the show. <laughs> it is. It is. It's, 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 yeah, they like, they like to, 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 to come in on the coattails of Tantra because Tantra is a noble practice. Sexology, I think, is a little more challenging. I mean, you know, they they're willing to go into other areas that I don't think a, a tantric person is willing to go into depending of course on what flavor of tantra you're doing. The flavor of tantra that I'm really only teaching ever in my life is kundalini tantra. That's it. That's it. And my Kundalini Tantra is so unique from, say, other practices of it, you could actually call it Chrism Tantra. Because I fully insert uh, spiritual practice uh, technique inside of loving, beneficial uh, uh, instruction. Because I know the power of, of creativity that the human sexual being possesses. And I also know that the, uh, there's, there, in my understanding, there are only two types of children that can be birthed this way. One is a kundalini child, and the other is your normal, you know, ten fingers, ten toes human child. The human child you'll see, the kundalini child you will feel, and you will become that child. Just look in the back of the SF Weekly. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Mike. I'll be there. <laughs> I think. Maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Mike is giving me instructions on where to find out more about sexology marketed as Tantra. And uh, evidently there's a San Francisco Weekly that, that gives it on the back, which I'm sure it does. Uh, so, anyway, uh, if you have a quick question... For for this episode, please call 347-934-0026. Uh, if you don't have a quick question, I'm going to come on over to Santara here. Wake up. Wake up, a little Santara. Wake up. <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> Is there anything you yes. would like to add to this program, my dear? 
what I would like to know, not in relation to Tantra, Chris, um, I've, I've said really what I, what I wanted to say, I guess. <laughs> um, what I would like to add, though, is just maybe to return to Elizabeth, what Elizabeth said about the ticket. And just in case people came to the, um, the show later, we were talking about the seminar that Rosemary is organizing, the Kundalini Awakening Seminar of Chrism on September the 27th and 28th. And Elizabeth kindly left us know that the North on Delta Airlines from the Northwest, you can get a round trip ticket for $228. So if anybody is thinking of flying from the Northwest, maybe now would be a good time to consider buying your ticket at Two hundred and twenty-eight dollars for the round trip. That is a good That's, price, I have to say. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it is. It is. Thank you, yeah. uh, Santara, and thank you, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez. Thank you for that information too, and for Rosemary. Thank you for for putting on this uh, this uh, this seminar. It's a huge responsibility, Rosemary, and I appreciate uh, what you and Eileen have have done. So thank you very much once again. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Mike Strong is adding, I've been taught that Tantra is the practice of combining mantra, yantra, mudra, etc., and learning to do it while sitting, standing, walking, talking, including sex. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that, Mike. I wouldn't disagree with that. Uh, yantra, maybe not so much if you're driving. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe hold back on the mudra, too, you know, while we're driving. Uh, it looks to me I'm, I'm, I'm getting real uh, uh, I, I guess Eastern. There's a lot of Eastern flavor that I'm getting to your uh, to your to your response there, and it's good. It is it is all good. Uh, and uh, the yantra doesn't have to be when you're doing a yantra practice. It doesn't have to be with the Sri yantra, by the way. Okay, and uh, mantra yantra mudra. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It is. And it's something that you can do all the time after a while. But the thing is, is you want to stay grounded as well. The idea is not to have kundalini and then leave the body. The idea is to have the kundalini while you're living in the body. And to, to have that very special experience of having the divine physical. The physical divine. What a huge joy that is. And, Mike, I feel that strongly in you. Elizabeth, Dalton, Gonzalez, I feel it strongly in you. And Bashti and Julie and Narissa. I mean, everybody here in our little, our little meeting space, uh, I feel very positive uh, vibrations coming through. And I know that you'll be feeling the vibrations coming through me. Now, I'm going to end the show this time with a series of alms. And so I want to say thank you. Santara, John O'Connor, I'd like to say thank you, Rosemary and, and uh, Narissa, Josephine and Eileen and Mike and, and, and uh, Bruno. See, I can't see. My, my thing went away here. I can't see everybody on there. Let's see, let's see if I can get that back here. No. Okay. Everyone, thank you. Here we go. Ah. Uh... 